And South Africa is seeking 95 billion rand, that's about $5 billion from multilateral lenders to help it fight the COVID-19 pandemic. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa last week announced a $26 billion economic package to deal with the health and economic consequences from the COVID-19 pandemic. The package, the biggest yet to be announced on the continent, is roughly 10% of the country's GDP. Joining me now to weigh into this is the practice lead sub-Saharan Africa research at Docker Frontier London, William Hartwell. Good afternoon, William. Thank you for joining us. Pleasure. Now, President Ramaphosa last week announced $26 billion economic package to deal with COVID-19 and its economic impacts. That's the biggest ever. Now, given South Africa's already large fiscal deficit and in light of the recent downgrade by Moody's, now the country is seeking about $5 billion from multilateral institutions. Is this where the government hoped to fund this economic package? Well, uh, the situation we're in is really one where the government has to provide the support to really pr prevent further damage to the economy. So we're expecting the economy to experience a fairly deep recession anyway, over 6% contraction. Um, so that's going to happen even with these measures in place. However, it does, of course, shed light on the poor fiscal state of the public finances. And Moody's has already pointed this out, of course, that uh, significant additional borrowing, for instance, to fund this is going to uh, make those fiscal metrics uh, even worse. So it does, of course, raise uh, worries around the debt levels. And, of course, going forward into 2021 and beyond, uh, the government's finances are going to be uh, in a very uh, perilous state, uh, certainly. Um, but in terms of where this money is coming from, uh, we know that some of it is coming from reprioritized budgets, uh, from, so existing money. And we would expect further cuts to certain areas of budget, of government budgets in order to fund these emergency measures. Uh, other money is going to come uh, very likely from multilateral lenders, so the IMF, uh, the World Bank and also the, the BRICS Bank or the New Development Bank. So we know the government is in talks with all of these institutions to try and raise uh, part of that funding as well. So what is the pact uh, these pending measures are likely to take both um, regarding handling the public health crisis and uh, supporting the economy? Yeah, so there are a number of priority measures that this money is going to fund. So we know that the government is already got in place uh, measures to provide support to society at large. So additional uh, top-up social grants, for instance, to help people to be able to afford basic necessities, for instance, uh, but also support to businesses. So we know that there are um, extended tax deadlines, for instance, um, and additional money is going to be put towards a loan guarantee scheme to make it easier for companies to get additional credit to at least tide them over the, the worst part of the downturn, which we expect to really be most pronounced during Q2. Um, and then, of course, still weighing on growth uh, throughout the rest of the year as well. So what are the measures are likely to be taken in the coming week, for instance, on interest rates, supporting state owned enterprises and assisting uh, struggling private sector firms? That's true. There are a number of additional areas where supports are going to be offered. So uh, this package that's equivalent to 10% of GDP, that's one area, particularly on the fiscal stimulus side. But there are a number of other areas, too, where the government is and is having to make decisions. So one is what happens with the struggling state-owned enterprises. We know, of course, that South African Airways has been in a difficult spot already, and now things have actually got more difficult for them. So we know a big restructuring exercise is underway. Um, the government is in talks with trade unions about potentially severance packages for uh, SAA employees, and they're looking at relaunching the airline uh, in another form at a later stage. Uh, and of course, those supports to ESCOM and other SOEs uh, are, are still there uh, as well. Um, when it comes to um, other areas, of course, in the domain of the central bank, we do expect at least another interest rate cut, potentially uh, two uh, during the course of this year, which would of course lower the cost of borrowing and again, provide a little bit of support for households, uh, for instance, on, on credit, uh, credit card or mortgage debt, um, and also additional support for, for companies as well. So uh, we'd expect borrowing costs to come down during the course of the year as well. 
All right, thank you very much for your time, William. William Artwell is a, a practice lead sub-Saharan Africa research at Docker Frontier.